Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video I'd like to speak with you about the Chinese port shutdown and all the problems we're seeing in the California ports with all the container ships floating around in the open seas. Now before we get started I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses, in your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers consisting of leased out owner operators and carriers operating under their own MC authorities running under our truck dispatch services. As always guys, big big thank you for all the likes you've provided in all the previous videos. Please do keep them coming and let's talk about this Chinese port shutdown and all the issues we're seeing out in California with the container ships and the containers floating around. Guys, uh, this is a major issue. In fact, both of these things are a major issue with some of these things uh, seemingly having been corrected but as you shall see, nothing has changed. At this time, at this, uh, recording this video, uh, 20 million people are under lockdown out in China. The number was larger, but they have uh, kind of calmed down a little bit and let some folks go out and buy uh, food in stores. There are major issues. I'm not going to get into the cities and the provinces because, frankly, I'm going to butcher the names and you can get that information elsewhere. Just, uh, you know, just know that lots and lots of folks who are a part of the supply chain, who are part of manufacturing, they're part of the factories, they are the workers that are producing the freight, the products that are being shipped in. Uh, to the United States, Canada, Europe, um, and all sorts of different countries, the African continent, all the countries there are all reliant on Chinese uh, products. Now, what's happening is that we're looking at uh, some major issues considering that uh, the, the Winter Olympics in Beijing are coming up on February 4th and at this time lots and lots of cities and provinces in China have their train service and their bus service completely suspended uh, and uh, because of Chinese zero COVID policy the supply chain has basically stopped or has definitely uh, slowed down considerably. Millions of people are sitting around unable to not only buy food but they can't even go to work and make the money necessary in order to pay uh, uh, you know, for you know all their daily expenses and food that they need for uh, for survival. And on top of everything, Samsung and Micron, the two of the largest uh, computer chip manufacturers in the world, have actually warned of a global chip shortage, which is also something that you and I have discussed. Um, at length. This is the reason why we have a shortage of trucks, we have a shortage of trailers, why the prices have absolutely spiked through the roof and we've talked about all this. I'll, you know, I'll leave a little cards throughout the, this video so you can you know, go back there if you haven't seen those videos and we also had a video, uh, once again I'll leave a card here in the corner, that video has uh, you know, garnered over 100,000 views uh, because of its importance I believe, uh, because of the fact that China did have major issues that have affected the global supply chain and we've talked about that uh, in that video. So we're coming back around to this topic because the, it, it hasn't been corrected. In fact, what we're about to see might actually uh, eclipse what we've seen so far. And let me kind of uh, discuss that. So there's there's Ningbo, which is a, a major Chinese port. It's the third uh, busiest port in the world. And we've talked about that as well in the video. Now, why I'm discussing this is because they've had shutdowns there. Uh, they, they have factory closures. They have all sorts of restrictions set up on trucking in China. And this is definitely having, having uh, all sorts of ramifications on the global supply chain. In addition to that, we're talking air freight. There are air freight slowdowns because uh, they've had 100 crew members that were isolated because uh, three uh, pilots were tested positive for uh, the virus and uh, now we're talking about a gl global supply chain delays that are going to affect absolutely everyone and they're being reignited and uh, you know, because these are generally lagging indicators, we're going to see the majority of the problems uh, appear in our economy sometime later. But this is, uh, or these are the beginning signs, or the, the you know the, the the first things that we're going to start noticing now. Now, as far as California. We again talked at length about you know Port of Long Beach, Port of uh, Los Angeles. We've talked about Washington and all the other many of the other ports out there, and there are some major issues. Now I have actual very very credible sources on the ground uh, who are uh, part of the you know one of the branches of the military. I really can't go into too much detail. Uh, to kind of keep their anonymity for uh, you know for them for their safety, but they have shared some information with me uh, out from you know from the sky I, I, as they do patrols, and they're basically saying, look, 
the issue hasn't been resolved. I know that when we're looking from the shore, we're seeing uh, almost no ships out there, but what's actually happened is that the powers that be actually pushed out the ships out into international waters. Now, normally it's considered that 200 nautical miles and you're out in international waters which is about 230 miles over the road. Uh, now, what the rules are, and I checked on this, is that once you're 24 miles out, that's already considered the beginning of international waters. There are some uh, stipulations that I won't go into the details, and those of you who know the differences can certainly comment on that. But the truth is that they pushed out the ships about 40 miles out, so out of sight, out of mind, and we think that the problem has been corrected. The issue is that these ships have been flo floating around there full of products, full of containers, uh, of products that have been bought and paid for by businesses, by people, uh, you know, and they've been there for well, now a year. What's left of that product? Uh, how much of it can be actually sold? How much of it is salvageable? Uh, you know, who knows? And, uh, you know, the last thing I'll tell you that if, if Russia, as you know, there's a whole issue with the whole border and potential uh, conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Well, if Russia moves on Ukraine, be prepared to spend a lot more money on gas and diesel because those prices will absolutely spike and will make what we're seeing right now as far as gas and diesel prices, even with the coastal cities, it'll make it look like child's place. So guys, absolutely would love to hear your take in the comment section below. Please leave your comments. If you haven't liked the video, please smash that like button for us. You know, if, uh, subscribe to the channel. If you're able, share this video on social media platforms like Facebook and what have you. It definitely helps spread the word. We'd love to grow this channel and get this information out to as many people as possible, whether they're in the trucking industry or not, because ultimately it's a global economy and we're all in this together. As they say, um, for now, I'm gonna switch over to camera. We're gonna look over the loads we book for our customers and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Welcome back guys. Let's take a look at some of these loads. Absolutely exceptional week that we have here today. Definitely stick around for this one. Guys, we're going to start off with a dry van that has absolutely obliterated all the rates and even beat the reefers. Uh, started out of York, Nebraska, went to uh, Jameson, Oregon. It's a 40,000 pound load of agricultural products, 1,220 miles, booked at $6,000, got them $4.92 a mile. Then Fruitland, Idaho to Denver, Colorado. It's a 40,000 pound load of miscellaneous products. That product was uh, picking up in the evening. Uh, the driver you know, used the skills and you know, made them load them up real quick in the morning. So you, know, you can make the, make the one day delivery uh, or make the delivery one day uh, quicker. It's 880 miles, booked also at 6,000 bucks, got them 682 a mile. Then out of Fort Collins, Colorado, took a load to Sheridan, Wyoming. 44,000 pound load of beverages. Uh, this was a very, very hot load. It booked in the last minute with basically very, very tight hours, but they managed to negotiate again the times uh, for basically a better uh, time for the receiver to get them unloaded so you can have enough time for the next one. 369 miles booked at 2,000 bucks, got them 542 a mile. And they finished off with Colony, Wyoming, going to Searcy, Arkansas. It's a 41,000 pound load of retail goods. Again, uh, lucky that sometimes things work out for us. 1142 uh, mile run, booked for 6,000 bucks, got them 525 a mile. And get this, they ended up running Monday to Monday. So seven days on the road, regular drive and grossed exactly $20,000 on the dot, ran 3,611 loaded miles with an average of 554 per loaded mile average. Absolutely not a regular income for any type of equipment in today's market, uh, which is still very strong, very hot. And, and this is what the, what the dispatchers had to uh, you know, say. He said that the, the, the driver did an absolutely an excellent job in communicating and that communication is an absolute key to making sure you make this kind of money. The driver did a fantastic job. They're very grateful, very appreciative of this uh, because this allowed dispatch to move around the appointment, sort things out, make this work. Because you can't run 3,600 miles and, and make this kind of money if you're kind of sloppy with things. So dispatch definitely did their magic and the driver very much helped in making sure that this was working out and getting things sorted out. Communication is key to success and this is a very strong driver. As they said, he was uh, born to uh, pull these kind of loads out in the mountain areas with snow and ice. He did a fantastic job. Next, we have a reefer. Coming out of uh, uh, Monogalila, Pennsylvania, I killed that one, sorry. 
Uh, going to Hartsville, Tennessee. It's a one pick, one drop, 42,020 pounds. It's a dry load of cement bags on pallets. So the reefer stayed off on this one, 531 miles booked at 2,100 bucks, got them 395 a mile. Then Murfreesboro, uh, Tennessee, going to Louisville, Kentucky, 43.5 on the weight. Uh, load of refrigerated food, 34 degrees on the reefer, 206 miles booked at $1,100, got him 534 a mile. Then Hamilton, Ohio with a one pick three dropper going to uh, Denver, Pen uh, Pennsylvania. Hatfield, Pennsylvania, and a final in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Uh, this is a frozen load of uh, baked goods, 38,600 pounds on the weight, negative 10 on the reefer, 604 miles booked at 5,800 bucks, got a 960 a mile. Then Vineland, New Jersey, going to Chesapeake, Virginia. Now this was six drops in, 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 in Virginia, uh, 44, uh, degree load. It's a load of garden bulbs uh, going to Home Depot stores. They're 20 minute, uh, 20 minute unloading. So very, very quick. Total of 375 miles booked at 3,300 bucks. Got them 880 a mile. Very, very well done. Uh, this driver ran from Friday to Friday, seven days on the road, grossed uh, $12,300 in their reefer. Uh, got their 34 Arisa done, uh, done at home, ended up making $12,300, ran uh, 1,716 miles, that's it, and ended up making that at 717 per loaded mile average. Very, very well done. She ended up going home uh, for personal matters and uh, she ended up being OTR for only five days. So seven days out, but five days on the road, 563 with deadhead included. So they did see a drop there. However, uh, you know, personal matters that had to be taken care of. They were very close and five days on the road to make that kind of money. Very, very well done. Next, we got ourselves a dry van coming out of uh, Mitchell, South Dakota, going to Salt Lake City, Utah. 41,000 pound load of dry goods, 945 miles booked at $4,040, got him 428 a mile. Then at a Clearfield, Utah, going to Bellingham, Washington. Uh, this was a load of kayaks, uh, 5,800 pound load, very, very light load. And uh, it was basically a load of kayaks, hard to, you know, to do a load because, you know, 5,800 pounds was a very light load that can cause problems in, 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 you know, in the snowy areas due to, you know, high wind and snow and ice on the roads, but they did very well. 894 miles booked at 4,000 bucks, got them 447 a mile. Then they went to uh, Puyallup, Washington, then to Denver, Colorado. It's a 24,100 pound load of stainless steel alloys, 1,331 miles booked at 6,000 bucks, got them 451 a mile for lots of miles. And uh, they ended up uh, finishing up, they ended up running Monday to Monday, grossed $14,000. $40 in gross, ran 3,170 loaded miles at an average of three, uh, 443 per loaded mile average. Uh, then we got ourselves a reefer coming out of uh, Webb City, Missouri to Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, this was, uh, looks like general mer merchandise load, uh, short runs, 151 miles booked at 1,210 mile uh, dollars, got them 801 a mile, definitely don't say no to that. And then uh, New Century, Kansas, going to Indianapolis, Indiana. It's a 35,000 pound load uh, of food ingredients. It was a protect from freeze load. 510 miles booked at 2,200 bucks. Got them 431 a mile. Then Lebanon, Indiana to Black Mountain, North Carolina. It's a 23,000 pound load of frozen food. Uh, got them a very, very nice load. It's a single day run, negative 10 on a reefer. Very light at 23,000 pounds. Only 515 miles booked at 3,900 bucks. Got them 757 a mile. Then Mills River, North Carolina to Shelbyville, uh, Shelbyville Indiana. It's a 42.5 on the load. A uh, load of tomatoes at 44 degrees on a reefer. 454 miles booked at two grand again. Got them 441 a mile. And it finished off strong with Richmond, Indiana going to uh, Dansbury or Danbury, Connecticut. It's a 42,000 pound load of dairy, 3435 on a reefer, 712 miles, booked at $3,800, got them 534 per mile. And these guys were run, uh, running Monday to Monday, seven days OTR with an average of uh, 560 per loaded mile and 501 per, lo uh, per mile with deadhead included, running 2,342 loaded miles and grossing $13,110 in a week in their reefer. Very, very well done. Next, we got ourselves a, a real nice one. A two pick, one drop coming out of uh, Fargo, North Dakota. This is a dry van and a second pick in New Century, Kansas, going to North Las Vegas, Nevada. 24,000 pound load, quite light. It's a load of food product, 
dry load, 1,965 miles booked at 7,000 bucks, got on 356 a mile, very respectable on a lot of miles. Then right out of Las Vegas, Nevada, going to Missoula, Montana, it's a 44,000 pound load of uh, beverages, 943 miles booked at $4,700, got on 498 a mile. And that was it for the week. They ended up actually running less than a week from Thursday to Wednesday, so six days on the road. Uh, grossed $11,700 on these two runs. Um, 2,908 loaded miles at an average of 402 per loaded mile. Very, very well done. And we're gonna finish off with a uh, reefer coming out of uh, Conroe, Texas, going to Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's a 43,000 pound load of non-alcoholic beverages, protect from freeze load, 1,209 miles booked at 4,500 bucks, got them 372 a mile. Uh, then out of uh, Stanwood, Michigan to St. Louis, Missouri, 44,000 pound load of bottled water, 493 miles booked at $2,400, got on 487 a mile. Then Pontoon Beach, Illinois with a one pick two dropper to Oak Creek, Wisconsin and Shawano, Wisconsin. Light load, 20,000 pounds of gravy. 520 miles booked at 1900 bucks, got them 365 a mile. Then Marinette, Wisconsin to St. Peter's, Missouri. It's a 40,000 pound auto parts and engine oil load. It was a refrigerated load at 55 degrees on a reefer. 563 miles booked at three grand, got them 533 per mile. They finished off with Bridgeton, Missouri to Waco, Nebraska. Light load at 19,000 pounds of empty containers. Dry load in this reefer, booked to take the driver home for the weekend, succeeded in doing that. 472 miles, booked at 1650, got him 350 per mile to go home. Ended up running Friday to Friday, gross $13,450 in gross for the week, ran 3,257 loaded miles at an average of 413 per loaded mile average, and you too can make this kind of money. We can't promise 20 grand a week every week, especially in a dry van, but as you can see, our dispatchers can make all sorts of things happen if you keep the lines of communication open and work hard to achieve your goals. Guys, our dispatchers know exactly what they're doing, and it doesn't matter if you're a least on owner operator or a carrier operating under your own MC authority. The bottom line is that if you're looking for a great opportunity as an owner op, you can lease on with us. Very, very good company. Very strong, very uh, uh, transparent in the way that we do business. You're going to get every Raycon. Everything is open. You know, all the uh, operating costs, you know, all the deductions, everything is very, very clear. I mean, that's why we do what we do. And the same thing is with the carriers. You know, if you're a carrier, whether you have company drivers or you have lease on owner operators, or maybe you're a carrier with just yourself driving, absolutely fine. We do this every single week. Take a look at our videos throughout uh, the, you know, our channel and uh, you'll see that we're very, very consistent. So definitely get in touch with us. It's very easy. You can call or text us at 801-448-6363. Again, 801 448 Call or text. You can also get more information on our website at aftdispatch.com forward slash go. You can fill out our chat box at the bottom of every one of our pages, provide the information. It takes maybe 10, 15 seconds and we'll get in touch with you, answer any and all of your questions, and you too could be making this kind of money. You never have to overpay, you never have to overwork, you never have to do anything shady. Guys, you can make the right, you know, this kind of money if you're working with the right kind of company. But until next week, stay healthy, be wealthy. Take care.